Hey everybody, real quick, this is Dr. Joffrey of Split Second Decisions. I just wanted to hop on real quick and share this video that I did with the former ambassador to the African UN nations, Dr. Battle. I've broken it down into, into the different sections, but in essence, it centers around the decisions we make in life, especially the split second decisions that we make. As you all know, I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician who's been on the front lines of many natural disasters and have created a process of how to go about making split second decisions. Join me for this enlightening, insightful, interesting conversation with Dr. Michael Battle. And for more information on split second decisions, please visit splitsecondecisions.com. Again, this is Dr. Joffrey, and I thank you for all that you do and be safe out there. It's in Africa. Oh, well, well, uh, well, you probably won't have that kind of pressure. It won't be 14 million people, but, but we are so glad to have you. Um, well, it's a pleasure. Dr. Bell, I just kind of want to jump right into it. Given all of your experiences, Dean of the Chapel, former ambassador to the African Union, uh, vice president at Chicago State, you were part of the civil rights movement. There's a lot going on. So I just wanted to pick your brain and just have, just kind of have a, a fireside chat with you. Okay, that sounds good to me. The first question is that if there was one main caution that you would give to young leaders and police leaders in terms of what's going on today, what would it be? Well, to anybody, one of the primary things I would say is that at the end of the day, everybody wants the same things out of life. And that is the ability to provide well for one's family, to be safe, to be sound, and to live in a community where people can authentically accept and appreciate each other. I would advise everybody to strive for that. I would also recognize that unfortunately, there are some people who are in uniform who did not come to their job uh, with the right kind of attitude to begin with, but who saw service as a police officer as a means toward a negative end of oppression. Mm. It is extremely sad to say that uh, my sister, for example, was the chair of the police commission in St. Louis. I have a brother-in-law mm. who headed the uh, homicide division in St. Louis. One of my sons became a police officer. I have a number of members in my family from the rank of colonel down to initial recruit in the police department. So there are a lot of very wonderful people. Most police are very, very wonderful people. Unfortunately, there are some that are not wonderful. Wow, so, so you come in there with experience input just based upon how involved your family is with, with, with the law enforcement establishment. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and with a tremendous um, respect for law enforcement, uh, that's why I think it is incumbent on law enforcement agencies throughout the world to make sure that they uh, separate themselves from people who are manipulating and abusing the authority mm -hmm. uh, of a police. And it's interesting, uh, what has happened with George Floyd and the response to what has happened, uh, particularly the response in Lafayette Park when the uh, attorney general under the advice of the president moved peaceful protesters out of the way, pushed mm. them out of the way in order for the president to have a hypocritical uh, uh, photo op with a Bible in his hand. People around the world are noticing that and they're noticing it from the vantage point of saying that America historically has stood for the spread of democracy, has stood for freedom of the press, freedom of expression and freedom and right to protest. And then when our diplomats uh, are trying to convey this kind of mes message to the rest of the world, the rest of the world now says, well, wait a minute, you can't tell us how to respond peacefully to peaceful protesters when your president, your attorney general, uh, mm -hmm. responded the way that you would have criticized us. 
had we responded. So there's this this tension in diplomacy now where we have to try to bring this nation back to the core of, of decency. Now, I do know, as you and everybody knows, that the nation has never been pure in terms mm-hmm. of its responses mm-hmm. to people. It would be mm-hmm. a, uh, a lie of the worst proportion to imagine or even <laughs> to suggest that we had never been uh, a pure. But as Barack Obama used to constantly say, we are always striving to make this a more perfect union. Mm. And we need to go back to that because in the last uh, uh, three and a half, almost four years, we have been doing a 180 degree antithetical move away from that, uh, trying to make this a more perfect union. Wow, thank, thank you very much. That, 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 that actually s- says a lot. Um, and, it, and it helps seg- segue into how people are feeling. You know, people are feeling stressed.